Muhammad Ali, the greatest, brought a standard of footwork to the heavyweights that the world hadn't seen. He had a legendary chin, was so fast and was nearly unstoppable until the end of his career. Most heavyweights plant their feet to get all their power into their punches and roll with punches, but Ali didn't. Ali floated around making angles, pulling away, making his opponent's punches fall short. At age 32, he's worried a little bit. Well, let's watch this. He was an unorthodox defensive outside boxer. His style was so unique because he did what he wanted to do, not necessarily what was correct to do, from a trainer's perspective anyway. He observed Sugar Ray Robinson and took elements of his style and made it his own. It's clear both men focused on rhythm, dancing, being relaxed while using their jab and when they feel they have an advantage, fast combinations to damage their opponent. That is the foundation in their training. Ripping punches by How can Ali be the greatest heavyweight if he breaks so many conventional techniques like having his hands up? Well he was unorthodox. He did things his way and he was so talented he made them work. His footwork was so unique because from a trainer's perspective you don't do what he does. In theory you should be more tired, easier to hit and have worse balance. But as you can see he has good balance, he wasn't easy to hit and the relaxation helps conserve energy. Ali created angles and by moving he is in control of when the exchanges start and he was hard to hit. And if he is hit, the damage received is much less because he's a moving target. When it's stationary you get the full force of the blow, usually relying on blocking to take the impact. When moving and getting hit you receive so much less of the punch as it glances off. And when he wasn't moving and he got hit, he showed you an amazing chin. Where most people would have been knocked out cold, he had more in him. Seemed no matter what you did, he would always be there in front of you. And when he is knocked down, like in the 15th round in the first fight against Joe Frazier, he gets up before the count of five. This is after a 15 round war, where most people wouldn't have even finished 12. He gets up as if it's round one. Ali mastered the jab. He made it so fast like a whip. He combined it with his footwork and feints. His footwork meant he got the whole body weight behind it and at times he looked like a cat playing with a mouse when he could jab his opponents at will. Maybe trying to slug with Joe. That right hand scored by Ali. Look at these. Get him with a light left hand. That time was... Ali would pull back away from punches, which is what most people teach not to do. However, he made it work. Because of his footwork and amazing reflexes, he was able to do this. He made punches miss by inches. This combined with low guard meant is he had good balance, but when he did get caught, and it was usually a left hook, coaches would be fuming because it's such an easy fix, but just holding your glove by your chin and blocking. But Ali had a solid chin, he did what he wanted. He would often try to roll the shot by pulling his face away, opposed to blocking. No one thought heavyweights could fight this way. Having hands low and pulling away from shots, which would normally leave you in a hospital bed, but Ali was different. He made you miss by an inch and he came back with sharp counters. Like the cross counter. He was 6 foot 3, 78 inch reach and the cross was a perfect punch to hurt his opponent from the outside. Crown that same year. Similar to Ray Robinson again, Ali would clinch after his own punches because it reduced punch output, minimising their chance of countering your punches and gives himself a break while well, the ref will then reset the action. Ali had fantastic reflexes, but he would get hit. 
and the left hook would be his weakness. His style is weak to the left hook. If you don't have the angle, then you need to block it and keep in your hand and your chin. Ali didn't like doing this though, so he had to absorb some powerful shots over his career, which he didn't necessarily need to take. Like Terry, it is not Joe Frazier. Twenty seconds into the round, the slow motion. Watch Joe Fraser, just relentless. Port on the road. Ali would use combinations to damage his opponents. He had very fast hands for heavyweight. And it's Ali taking him up. Ali continued to fight with an amazing record of 56 wins and 5 losses, 37 knockouts. But every boxer should learn by the end of Ali's career that you should finish when you're on top. He was clearly showing signs of CTE and Parkinson's, the latter of which he may have got without boxing. There's no doubt boxing certainly made it worse. Ali's health really took a beating and he had to live with that for the rest of his life. The greatest had to fight both inside and outside the ring. He fought on for too long, but left a fantastic legacy that will last forever. Whenever people talk about boxing, they will mention Muhammad Ali. Muhammad, congratulations. Am I the greatest of all times? Muhammad. Ray Robinson and Muhammad Ali used this style, which had unconventional techniques, certainly by today's standards. You rarely see footwork like theirs. They had such good rhythm, their hands were low, Yet both will go down in history as some of boxing's finest. If you go to a boxing match, guaranteed you hear hands up. So how is it possible when you break so many traditional rules? How do you go down as all-time greats? Is it that they were just amazing and made it work? Or do you think the right person doing this style would work? Do you think that they would have been as good as they were if they had their hands up and more traditional footwork? So put it in the comments and let me know what you think. He puts them together, still fairly rapid. 